There's a look at the standings. It says it all. Georgia plays Auburn later today. Vern, Gary, and Tracy will have that one for you. And the weather here could not be better. 60 degrees. It'll get up to about 65. Sunny and clear. Wind will not be a factor for these special teams. And in his seventh season, Steve Spurrier, a seven-time SEC champion, formerly with the Gators, where he made himself a Hall of Famer. And Will Muschamp, who grew up in Gainesville, moved to Rome, Georgia, was a walk-on for the Bulldogs, but always dreamt of being the head coach of the Florida Gators as a child, now having his chance, and was mentored in many ways by Steve Spurrier. Coached for years under Nick Saban, obviously, as a defensive coordinator at LSU. Later went with him to the Dolphins, and then on to Texas, where he worked with Mac Brown. Jay Wooden will kick off. South Carolina lost the toss. Florida won it and elected to receive. So we'll see the Gators special teams that have been dynamite all season long practically won them the Georgia game on its own. Yeah, just a the, few weeks back. With the offenses struggling, the respective team special teams are going to have to step up, Timmy, and be a difference maker in this contest. Look for the special teams to perform at a high level today. Jeff Demps is back deep. World-class sprinter speed that he has. And, of course, back there with him is another guy fleet of foot, Andre DeBose. And we do expect to see Chris Rainey today. This may be as healthy a Florida team as we've seen since the Tennessee matchup very early in the season, back yep. in week three. Both Dimps and Rainey undersized, Timmy. Sit that hold up to this very difficult SEC season. Yeah, they go with the sky kick, but it's taken by DeBose, and he's up to about the 33-yard line. And you see the respect that they have for the Florida Gators special teams. Now our starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. John Brantley, all eyes on this young man who has really gutted it out the last couple of weeks at 50% effectiveness, says to us now it's up to 80%. But he does not have the lateral movement necessary, so Charlie Weiss has designed an offense that enables him not to do very much other than push off. Very rarely will he get under center, although he does initially get there to check out the defensive front. One setback, and that's Dempse. Jordan Reed in motion. Reed on the receiving end at the 35, and he'll be ushered out at the 39-yard line. As you look at the, uh, it's actually A.C. Leonard rather than Reed that made that catch. As you see Xavier Nixon, we highlight him. He'll be at that left tackle position. They've got a patchwork group there. We talked about Reed, how good he is. Dimps, the outstanding running back, that they'll line up in slots as a receiver. These are, are a number of running backs that line up as wide receivers. Second down and three. Play fake, backside pressure, and the ball stripped away. Gamecocks think they've got it. And they do. Gilmore came with some pressure. Timmy, the pressure comes from the outside again. We're talking about affecting the quarterback. Both defensive coordinators want to do that to affect the outcome of this ball game early. The Gamecocks and that second-rated pass defense, unbelievable job. It looked like Gilmore not only provided the pressure, but took it away. So the Gamecocks get what they want. They've been an opportunistic defense all season long for Ellis Johnson. And now Connor Shaw with outstanding field position at the 35-yard line of the game. Shaw, a runner first. There's a marker down, and the pass is caught near the 25-yard line. Thrown to Alshon Jeffrey, but we'll have to check the flag. Preliminary indication that it is holding against South Carolina. Our referee today is Matt Austin, a veteran of this uh, outstanding SEC officiating crew. Holding, offense 55, 10-yard penalty, still first down. T.J. Johnson, the guilty party, as you look at our starting lineups, presented by Chick-fil-A for the Gamecocks. Connor Shaw, we mentioned nifty runner, he has an inclination to run first, perhaps a bit too quickly, and that's something the head ball coach has been working on with him. 
in the last couple of weeks. Well, they clearly miss the, the stability that Marcus Lattimore has given them offensively, and it affects their passing game as well. Talk candidly about Steve Spurry about that particular problem. Out of the shotgun, Brandon Wiles, the lone setback, and he takes it on the swing pass. And they'll rule it incomplete. As you look at the rest of that South Carolina offense, you talk about protection issues. This is a freshman, Mike Matulis, that they've gotten into right tackle because they're concerned about pressure off the edge from Florida. And Alshon Jeffrey, the go-to guy, 36 catches, but they've not been able to get him the ball down the field. That's been the issue for this team uh, since uh, the dismissal of Steven Garcia a few weeks ago. To Alshon's credit, he's not gotten frustrated. They just want to throw it in his direction and let him go get it. Second down and 20. And the quarterback draw that snuffed out quickly by the Gators. That defense is very quick. Slide of size up front as we look at them. Jay Howard, the redshirt senior, sort of the anchor for this team. Dominic Easley, also a playmaker up front. Linebacking core, smallish, but John Bostic is the leader of that team. Great lateral mobility for him. And uh, they just rave about Matt Elam and what he's meant to this team as a free safety that can also play nickel and do it in a quality manner. Third down and long after the turnover, the Gamecocks have backed up. They struggled a week ago against Arkansas offensively. Early moments here at Williams Rice Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. Shaw stepping up and again getting some pressure and finds his man. That's Jeffrey along the sidelines. Just put it in his direction, Steve Spurrier says, and let him go get it, and he did right there. Complete for 14 yards. Well, a couple of things to look at. First of all, Florida just bringing three rushers upfield, and Shaw does a great job of navigating, finding that soft spot within that coverage. And on the back end, a nice, delicate pass just over the head of the linebackers into that little pocket. And you look at it from behind. Look at the pressure and the poise of Shaw as he delivers it on time, just good enough to put that hand, the ball in the hands of an outstanding receiver. Well, it looks as though the head ball coach has decided to go for it. Fourth and nine, wow. they bring Kenny Miles in. There's the lone setback. I don't think about that. Well, this may have been just <laughs> enough to uh, elect to get a timeout. Spurrier thinks better of it and says, let's talk about it. Just underway in Columbia. LG is a proud NCAA corporate partner presents great SEC rivalries. USC, USC, the uh, rivalry notes that we have for you the game last year meant the SEC Eastern Division title for Spurrier he got that game in Gainesville against Urban Meyer the series record is two and four but some memorable games for Steve in his first season here in 05 and then a year ago to get South Carolina into the SEC championship game right away on fourth and nine this tells you how important uh, this drive is Call it fourth down and 11 rather than fourth and nine. So officially, fourth down 11 out of the shotgun. Shaw steps up. Needs some help. And the pass is incomplete. May have been short of the first down anyway, but he was looking for some help. He wanted his receivers to come back and help him. Well, the coverage is, again, just rushing three, trying to affect the quarterback with coverage. Four men actually come on that play, so the back end comes up on the outside. You can see he's trying to work his way to the boundary to find and buy some time with his leg. One of the way Connor Shaw affects this offense. Ellington was the intended receiver, but even had he caught it, he would have been shy of the first down. Florida dodges the bullet after the turnover. We'll be back.
just underway in Columbia. No score. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, and the third member of our broadcast team is Lewis Johnson downstairs. Lewis? All right, Tim, thanks so much. Well, we talked to Steve Spurrier earlier this week and asked him, where is he with this program now in his seventh season? He says he feels like they're on the way to becoming a dominant team, but they're not quite there yet. Now, he has four goals every season. They kind of gauge it all. First, he wants to beat Clemson in their home game here at the last of the season. Calls that winning the state title. Of course, the SEC East, which is still possible. Winning the SEC outright, which is still possible. And then finally, winning that national championship. Now that's gone, but today, two, three of his four goals are still alive as this game begins with Florida. Tim? He is uh, without question part of the conference's Mount Rushmore of coaches. Uh, changed the direction of this league, Spencer, in the 90s with the fun and gun. They don't score as much as they once did, South Carolina, but he's found a way to be resourceful and win and do things that have never been done in the history of this program. Now Brantley from the 35-yard line first down. Pass was thrown behind the intended receiver, Andre DeBose, as we look at the South Carolina defense. Ingram is the playmaker, and when Clowney comes in for him, he also provides pressure. Linebacking core spurred by Antonio Allen, who's been bothered with an injury to his neck, did not play last week. The spur position is important. Swearinger is a good cover guy. Gilmore, Stephon Gilmore, perhaps their best cornerback in man coverage. Rainey comes into the game. Gators work with a slot left. And it's Rainey off the right side, and he's up to about the 40-yard line, a gain of three. John Brantley, young man, waited a long time for this chance. It hadn't come out exactly the way he anticipated dealing with the high ankle sprain. A fifth-year senior, you would expect to have more than this, but he doesn't have the complimentary tools. And wide receiver, of course, it helps to have an inside running game, but he's making the best of a difficult situation. Watch, watching him in warm-up, I, I got to tell you, he's pushing off that high ankle sprain, right ankle, better today than he has to date. That pass, though, again, under pressure, is thrown behind Rainey. And the Gators will be forced to punt. Well, again, it's the pressure off that weak side that's affecting him. Again, we talked to Dan Quinn and both defensive coordinators about affecting the quarterback on the respective sides of the ball. You didn't sack that opportunity, but you did get pressure there, Tim. We've had nine total offensive plays in the game thus far. Only three have actually gained yardage. Neither team with a first down. Chase Sanders goes back. Uh, Kyle Christie will punt it away. Should get it off around the 30-yard line. Sanders does have a boot that was brought back this year. And again, you see the respect that both teams have angling it for the sidelines. It goes off the side of the foot of Christie. So a very poor punt, and the Gamecocks will have outstanding field position. Only 21 yards. They'll have it just shy of their 40. DJ Dirk and the special teams coach not pleased with that punt. A good old fashioned rock'em sock'em start defensively. No score. And uh, you mentioned earlier, Spencer, that uh, Connor Shaw is coming off a bell ringing that took place in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Beckett got him off the backside. And uh, frankly, I didn't know if he'd be cleared for this game when I saw that hit. Well, it was a significant hit that came from that blind side. Without the significant running game, teams are going to be not reluctant to come off the edge and try to affect the quarterback with serious pressure. It's something they've got to contend with until they get that running game back on track. He has found Jeffrey once. But that's it. And they went steadily backwards. Penalties hurt them after they got the turnover on the plus side of the field a moment ago. And flags come down. Premature movement up front. This should back up the Gamecocks even further. Like Rokevius Watkins and those guys on that left side moved prematurely. Prior to the snap, false start, 50 offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. A.J. Can right next to him. A Showtime original documentary, A Game of Honor, takes you inside Army-Navy football. 
Watch preview episodes of the film at cbsports.com slash honor. And for every video viewed this Veterans Day weekend, a donation will be made to the Wounded Warrior Project. First and 15 of the quick hitch. Taken by D.L. Moore, 6'4", 205-pound junior from Bowling Green, Kentucky, ahead for seven yards. If they can get Moore going opposite of Jeffrey on the other side, I think what that does, it gives them a threat, a legitimate threat. It's just an insignificant, apparently, seven-yard game, but that's a big-time play. Yeah, they get half of it back, so second down and eight. And ahead goes Wiles. This is a young man that, uh, in their win over Tennessee, had... 137 yards on 28 carries, so he can get lathered up and be very effective. You, certainly Marcus Lattimore is a special back, but they are very hopeful that this freshman from Blythewood, South Carolina, can become a big-time running back for them. Well, he's not the interior runner inside, but again, it's 6'1", 223. He gives you that physical presence that Marcus Lattimore did. Not as good a receiver, however. Third and eight. Third and six, I beg your pardon. Boy, he's nifty with his feet, oh, but that out. pass thrown off the back foot is picked off. Intercepted by Deontay Saunders. Now, just as he got away from the pressure, you see his quarterback's coach talking with him there. Just a poor decision made. It was a poor decision. Again, anytime you're stressed and pressure, keep your eye on this guy right here in the middle of the field, just roaming around back there, seeing where the ball is coming, gets a beat on it, comes run underneath the coverage. And again, an outstanding play of tracking it. Shaw throwing across his body, going the opposite direction. That's a cardinal rule that a quarterback should not break. Again, moving one direction, trying to make a throw the opposite direction. That was prime for the picking, Timmy. It was a corner blitz by Roberson that caused the problem. Now the Gators inside South Carolina territory after the turnover, and Jeff Dempse takes off. Ahead to the 45 for a gain of three. Again, what Florida's going to do with Dempse and Rainey, they're a little bit undersized for ideally what they would like to do in this offensive system. But if they can have a modicum of success, three, four, five yards on the early downs running inside, that's going to set up the perimeter, which they don't throw a lot, but when they do, it's usually for big yard. Officially, they gave him two, so it's second and eight. Three wide receivers and a setback. Gators have been running primarily out of the pistol. Handoff's made easier, and again, it's Gimps. Boy, that quick burst is something special. Inside the 40 to the 37-yard line, Antonio Allen made the tackle. Dempse against Vanderbilt was incredible. Well, he was incredible. Again, he shows you some of that speed and elusiveness. And against Vanderbilt, he got outside. And once he gets an open space, it is Katie bar the door. Number 28 is going to score more often than not. Great interior runner, but his specialty is stretching the edges with that world-class speed. Look at that. Seven yards of touch. <laughs> Brantley continues to feed and fan him, and why not? Down the sidelines and another first down at the 22-yard line of South Carolina. That's a gain of 14. D.J. Swearinger, the free safety, runs him out. Well, this is problematic for Ellis Johnson's defense because, again, he's coming right here on the boundary inside. Tough, nice reach action by the guards and the tackle. Cuts through the hole, has that ball seated in the proper hand on the outside, uses it, almost loses the handle on it, but keeps the head down and finishes that run on the big end. Not bad by a guy that's about 170 pounds. To him. Yeah, he kept it high, too, didn't he? Yep, he Made did. sure he kept the, the football high to the shoulder pad. Rainey is now in the backfield. And he'll take it right up the gut. Chris Rainey, what a cutback. Rainey is stopped at the one-yard line. Tim, this is not supposed to happen. You're talking about small backs exposing the interior of that defense of Ella Johnson, the Gamecocks. They had no solution for this. Again, right up the middle, a direction's called starboard side. To the right side, everybody's shifting and moving that way. But guess what? They come right back at him. See the starboard charge going the opposite direction of ultimately where the player's going to go? That's not what you want to have down here, much less by a back this small. Now they mark it down at the two. First and goal. Gets the setback. And he's tripped up. Great penetration by South Carolina. Sherrard go lightly. 
Went hardly right in to Dips. <laughs> he went with intention and purpose on that to disrupt it in the backfield. And again, when a third of your playbook kind of goes out the window down here, the best way to deal with it is be aggressive on the outside, which he was, go lightly with a <laughs> tremendous contact and tackle. This has been, as we've said all year, an, an opportunistic defense that Ellis Johnson has. 17 picks on the season, and without a power back, this is an area where Florida's offense can at times become stagnant. The big tight end is always a threat here, too. Trying to get to the edge again is Dips. Stopped behind the line of scrimmage again. You know, if you're watching at home, you're thinking, well, why can't they have success when they get down here in the red zone? Well, this is the restricted space. Everything goes outside. You try to get it bounced to the perimeter. There's nothing there because the field is shrunk. Everything happens much faster here. Let's take a look at the uh, Verizon red zone where the Gators are trying to get the job done as South Carolina tries to hold on. And a timeout taken by Florida. Timeout Florida, their first timeout of the half. Be a 30 second timeout. This is again, we go back to, you know, not having the power back that you would like to have in this offense. And that's what Will Muschamp's teams will be about in the future. But right now, with guys like Demps and Rainey, quickness to the edge is an issue. Well, it's a tough spot to be in, but ultimately they'll find a way to navigate a couple of years. They'll be where they need to be. Well, if you fall for the perfect man, better make sure he doesn't have a perfect girlfriend. Catch TV's number one new comedy, Two Broke Girls, Monday, only CBS. Now, both teams have had opportunities after turnovers. With the help of quick bursts by Dempsey and Rainey, the Gators have gotten it as close as the two. But much like the Gamecocks, they went in reverse after they, uh, they got there. Well, Will Muschamp is excited about his ball club in terms of how they've prepared for this game and the rest of the season, for that matter. They are headed in a positive direction, but right now they've got these Gamecocks on their heels, mainly because of an interior running game that, quite frankly, I guarantee you, Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, was not anticipating. Well, they got DeBose lining up on one side, along with Deontay Thompson, so two receivers to the top of your screen. The trail of receiver up top, Timmy. There's a play here for him. Dents the lone setback. Play clock winding down. Brantley to throw it. It's caught. Shy of the end zone. Deontay Thompson stopped at the two. Well, it was a great opportunity to take advantage of the coverage. This is always tough when you got two guys stacked in position. It's very difficult. Soft coverage underneath the option route to come right back and try to find that soft spot in the zone. It was a great effort by the quarterback, read properly by the receiver. Again, the constricted space of the red zone. It's tough to score down here. Swearinger was right where he needed to be. Number 36, the free safety. And now Caleb Sturgis, 17 of 19 on the year. Missed the Georgia game. Came back at a 55-yarder a week ago against Vanderbilt. He knocks that one home from 21. Timeout. Will Muschamp's team gets the first points, and South Carolina falls behind. Each week, Sonic celebrates creativity in the SEC. Among the awards and achievements in Will Muschamp's office, there is one piece of metal that may seem slightly out of place. It's a titanium rod that was inserted into his leg after a high school injury on the baseball field. When the bones healed, he decided to frame the rod to have it serve as a reminder that anyone can overcome adversity. He later played safety as a walk-on at the University of Georgia and was named defensive captain of the Bulldogs in his senior season. Pretty obvious that the young coach had some swagger in his days with the Georgia Bulldogs, huh? And they didn't show all of it. I've seen that several times. He had a nice little move. He got a little Dougie in him. Yeah. He can move a little bit. He would be flagged today for <laughs> such a thing. You saw the uh, scoring drive. Really, the the running of Demps outside and that quick pop inside by Rainey got them in position. But again, the inability without a power back, uh, Spencer, it was evidenced in that last sequence because... Uh, 
when you when you have to go to the edge to get in with your run game and you run out of terrain in the red zone that's a problem yeah I don't disagree with you but again they did have great success running the ball inside because they were effective uh, at, outside so when you move that interior linebacker to the perimeter to, to deal with that pressure outside the, the inside starts to open up and that's what Florida exploited Bruce Ellington also the point guard on the basketball team here in South Carolina and Stefan Gilmore back deep and the boot comes down to Ellington. Nice. He has assumed their markers down behind him as he is taken out of bounds at the 40 yard line. 37 yard return but you see the look of disgust on the head ball coach's face. It was a well designed special teams play it came back this direction they had a nice funnel in there. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 40 of the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. So that will back them up. Field position is such a concern in college football. I was talking with uh, DJ Durkin, the special teams coach for Florida, and the percentages, Spencer, of effectiveness for offenses once you get the ball beyond the 30 yard line to start a drive mm -hmm. in college football, it's incredible. Yeah, no question about it. Talking to Steve Spurry, he's concerned about special teams in the return game overall. Had a huge return against them against Arkansas last week. And again, he's trying to mitigate that as much as he possibly can. And penalties certainly doesn't help correct the problem. From the 10 yard line, first down for Connor Shaw. Already one interception thrown for him. And uh, Brantley had a fumble. Off some pressure from the Florida defense. And there you can you see the ability to run the football. He's the second leading rusher for this team now with better than 300 yards. He gets ahead for 10 right there. Yeah, that scheme helping it out right there. Steve Spurrier doing a nice job of going trips away. In other words, trying to track as much tension as possible away from him to yeah. open it up. And he's not a small guy. 6'1", 202 pounds. He's big enough to hold his own once he touches that ball and runs. First first down of the game for the Gamecocks and here's Wiles Brandon Wiles ahead to the 24 maybe the 25 Jay Howard number six from Apopka Florida prepped at Jones High School the redshirt senior making the tackle Timmy these teams almost mirror images of one another both with the same problems of running back and quarterback technically approaching the game the same Wiles again just short of the first down it would appear very close though giving four four and a half Earl Okai made the stop third down less than a yard Wiles again no it's a fake and here goes Shaw fooled me and the Florida defense as well first down at the 47 yard line it's an 18 yard pickup well, the key is the formation. Get everybody headed the opposite direction of where you want to go. Shaw's coming back this direction here. Does a fine job of tucking the ball again and finishing the run. This was all by formation and design. Get all of that inside tension away from you. Again, you see everybody except the safety recognizes the ball is going the opposite direction. You won the numbers matchup on that one. Classic uh, read option play yes. here. It stopped shy of the line of scrimmage. May have gotten right back to the line. Dominic easily makes the stop. Look at the South Carolina offense the first five games and then the last three. And again, you go back, there were issues for Steven Garcia, but the one thing he could do was get the ball down the field in the vertical passing game. Yeah, but the absence of Marcus Lattimore is the reason why those numbers are precipitously down. Jaw stepping up. Now gets away as he's flushed from the pocket. What an athletic move. That's another first down. At the 42-yard line, you know, he look at that first progression and then make the decision to tuck it and run. In that case, though, I think uh, the head ball coach would say, good job, young man. Well, when you stay committed to the system long enough, the defenders have to respond to what you're doing. And that's exactly what Shaw did there. Attracted the defensive pressure up front. And as a result of their converging on the quarterback, he was able to make a miss, use his feet to get creative, and gain an extra yard. Double tight end setup now for South Carolina with Rory Anderson coming in. Wiles with a cutback. He stopped at the 40 yard line. Omar Hunter making the tackle after a three yard gain. 
you talk to Steve about Connor Sean, he'll say, as only he could. Well, you know, we run a little read option for him. Make it happen. <laughs> Give him some ball plays that he can work with. That may be the uh, free testament to the genius of Spurrier. Wiles is stopped, but we've got flags abound prior to the snap. Procedure the preliminary indication. Before the snap, false start. 81 offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Tonight, the candidates square off right here in South Carolina. As CBS News brings you the Republican presidential primary debate. That's tonight at 8 Eastern. Only CBS. say that politically the Palmetto State always <laughs> figures into the equation, doesn't it? Yes. It does. <laughs> Second down and 11. Backside pressure, but Shaw steps up. And the catch is made by Ace Sanders, number nine, the flanker, sophomore from Bradenton, Florida. We talked about Marcus Lattimore. There he is when that young man went down while trying to block I mean, the, the gas heard around this state was uh, incredible. And uh, with defenses keying on him, he almost had 1,000 yards just over halfway through the season. That's amazing. And even missing some of the games he has, he's on pace to what he was tracking last year as far as rushing toes. Outstanding. Back. Third down and seven. Gamecocks uh, flank uh, tight into the top of the screen off the line. Well, that pass is batted down and caught. That ball was tipped and then caught in the air by Justice Cunningham. Well, again, Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator for Florida, is always talking about affecting the quarterback. And one of the ways you do it is you get your hands up in the air. Again, in the face. If you find out you can't get to him, just try to affect the quarterback. It's not always about sacks. It's about blocks. It's about pressures and things of that nature. That's how you determine the outcome of games. Sharif Floyd blocked it, but uh, presence of mind by Cunningham to come away with the reception. And on fourth down, Spurrier is going to go for it again on fourth and two. Wiles, the lone setback. Play clock winding down. He's going to have to take another timeout. Mm -hmm. Timeout, South Carolina. Their second timeout of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Part of the situation with a young quarterback when you know you're taking a look at what the defense is giving you, and uh, there's some confusion, and there was. Well, Monday on CBS. Five O's turning up the heat. Hot case, hot cars on a hot new Hawaii Five O. Monday, only CBS. I'm digging Hawaii Five O. You know, I have to tell you though, I'm a Jack Lord kind of guy. Going back to the old school, man. Nothing like Jack Lord. Steve McGarry. Oh, what I wouldn't give. What, what I wouldn't give for the Moss. <laughs> He's going for it again on fourth down and two, and. Uh, in, in many respects, I think this this tells you of the concerns that Spurrier has for his defensive football team right now. They've been a little banged up. Allen's not at 100 uh, percent. I think he knows that Ellis Johnson's defensive football team was handed a lot of short field situations from Arkansas last week. They were on their heels. He needs to keep the football. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You mentioned Allen there plays that spur position for them, which is a hybrid safety slash linebacker. The more they can keep this defense off the field, it helps South Carolina's chances of success, Tim. Here we go, fourth and two. Empty backfield. Shaw, a straight run. I think he may have gotten there. That's a first down. Let's keep it simple, right? Yep, keep it simple, but you know what? It, it, you got to get those big heavies up front, and the guard play is what allowed them to do it. Both guards coming around pulling if blocked, meaning if you're not covered, you're scooping around, and they do an excellent job to South Carolina of getting some nice blocking inside there. McLaurin and company. South on that Carolina, time to USC. South Carolina. 11th play of the drive. Shaw with 42 yards rushing on this drive so far as we come down to the final minute of the first quarter. It just popped right open, didn't it, for Wiles. Inside the 25 to the 24, Jalen Watkins, number 14, made the stop for the Gators. So now you get a little misdirection action working to get guys chasing one in one direction. A little counter motion. So second and four coming up. 
Alshon Jeffrey time one would think as we get into this part of the playing field. They got him ISO'd up top and safety in the middle of the field to help and quarter help. Up at the top of your screen number one Alshon Jeffrey. Wilds again. Nothing doing. Stopped by the interior alignment for the Gators. Dominic Easley, the first to make contact. Well, the Gators took advantage of uh, their turnover opportunity. The Gamecocks did not. At the end of the quarter, it's Florida 3 to nothing. We'll return to Williams Bryce Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Our score as we open the second quarter Florida leading three nothing South Carolina facing a third and two do you get the feeling that we're getting into that portion of the field where fade pattern to number one Alshon Jeffrey becomes a factor as long as South Carolina continues to have success inside and Elam and the company on the back end they're affected by that interior running game yeah. as long as that's successful that sets up number one on the perimeter Tim I'm going to be very interested to see what this uh, particular call will be. Shaw has been very effective on the ground himself on this drive with better than 40 yards. Five runs, five uh, very effective ones for him. Rolling right, looking towards the end zone, and it's incomplete. Brandon Wiles coming out of the backfield with a wheel route incomplete. So again, Four down territory yet again, but it does appear that maybe we will have a field goal try here. It was funny. I was watching tape last <laughs> night of that particular play, and Arkansas almost busted one wide open on South Carolina. Yep. So they're all boat co boat coach not uh, immune to picking off the play from the opposition from time to time. Jay Wooden will attempt the field goal for South Carolina. This one will be from 40 yards. Out of the hold of Seth Strickland. It may be to the right. It is wow. no good. Wide right for Wooten. <laughs> Opportunities missed. A six minute plus drive ends with nothing for South Carolina. Head down, ball down. Technique looks like it was good. Just pushed it right. Oh, if he could have just had a draw, he had a fade. We'll be back. The year was 2005, and for the first time, the head ball coach faced Florida. The Gamecocks jumped out to a 17-point lead in the second quarter. The Gators stormed back, and a Billy Latsko TD cut the lead to 20 to 19. But a long Sidney Rice completion set up another Gamecock score, and it was Steve Spurrier that celebrated in a win over his old team. And here's Steve. Um, I get the feeling in talking with him as we did yesterday that there's a lot of ball games in front of the ball coach. Don't well, you? Yeah, he likes the fact that, that he can achieve a lot of first while here. You're talking about back-to-back -back victories against the likes of Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. That's something that's never been achieved here, and that's, again, one of the many firsts that the old ball coach feels within his gun sights. Squandered opportunities so far in this game for his offense. John Brantley has Chris Rainey behind him on first and 10. Rainey set sail to the 25 yard line. Shaq Wilson, 54, the middle linebacker, junior from Jacksonville's first coast, made the stop. They may be undersized, but I am impressed with Chris Rainey and the position that Charlie Wise, the offensive coordinator, has put him in in this pistol formation. Good success in the interior. Then all of a sudden, when you affect the defense, he's able to bounce it to the outside. And once he gets out there, we clearly know he's got world class speed. That old saying, though, if you take away the speed, you take away the effectiveness. They're, they're really happy to have him back today. As we mentioned at the top of the show, this may be as healthy as their three top weapons have ever been since the Tennessee game in week three. Beautiful. Uh, and there is Jordan Reed. And this is a guy that you expect to get the ball a Jordan great Reed, deal more. He yeah. is an elite athlete on offense. An 11-yard pickup just becoming 
really uh, accustomed to playing the position. Charlie Weiss said to us he'd never played tight end, and his ball skills are already as good as any he's ever coached, and that's uh, that's saying something if you're Charlie Weiss. Well, first of all, he benefits from Charlie Weiss's creativity on that particular play, that 11-yard gain made possible by affecting the defense. You see all the number of bodies around the line of scrimmage on those first and second and short uh, opportunities made up by the inside running game. First and 10 from the 37. Brantley with pressure. Pass is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Frankie Hammond. Let's go back to the studio for a John Hancock update. Adam Zucker. All right, Tim, thanks. Number two, Oklahoma State trying to stay in that championship march. They're in Lubbock, and Brandon Whedon setting a new school record with his 67th touchdown pass to Isaiah Anderson. They score quickly, a fumble recovery for a touchdown on the ensuing kickoff. It's 35-0 as we send it back to you, Tim and Spencer. All right, thank you, Adam. Don't get too comfortable in there. <laughs> you did a nice job, though, Tim. Okay, <laughs> don't, don't go Wally Pip on me. Second and ten. <laughs> Great Burton is coming to the game. He provides a block for Laney, but there was simply too much penetration. Shaq Wilson again gets in there for a loss of two yards for the South Carolina defense. Like a old little counter tray action on that particular play. Again, the opposite reaction, and then Rainey tries to spin out of it, but the pressure up front a little bit too much catches him in the backfield. This crowd uh, very active. An undervalued uh, fan base here in Columbia. This is one magnificent location for college football. Always has been. Brantley under pressure has to dump it incomplete. Intended for DeBose. And a very good defensive sequence for Ellis Johnson's team. A lot of pressure. Melvin Ingram, he's a, he's a boatload to handle. Well, the pressure came on the games and the deal here from the outside. You can see the games cause the effect on the quarterback. Again, another of the great ways that Ellis Johnson is finding a way to affect the quarterback. And he got Jadavion Clowney Absolutely. unleashed on that play. Ace Sanders is back inside his 30-yard line. As Kyle Christie will punt it away. They will angle it with that sort of end over end soccer style approach but it's taken at the 31 on a low trajectory kick to Sanders and he forges ahead to the 39 yard line. That's where the Gamecocks will have it. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local CBS station. We mentioned it earlier, but it was on October the 15th that sophomore tailback Marcus Lattimore, while blocking for uh, Wiles, was injured. He just rolled right over that knee against Mississippi State. A sad day indeed for South Carolina. And uh, Lewis Johnson is standing by with him on the sidelines right now. All right, Tim, thanks a lot. Well, the first time the nation has heard from you, Marcus, and uh, we know physically how you are after the injury, but psychologically, how long is it taking you to accept what's happened here and just how are you dealing with it? Honestly, I, it took about a week, yeah. you know, just to realize, you know, my season is over. Right. But, I mean, there's nothing I could do about it. You know, I help, help, help my head up high and um, just getting ready, get, get, get the rehab. Now, you looked a little busy here a few moments ago. You got a young running uh, freshman running back, Brandon Wiles. How are you helping him? How's he doing? Oh, uh, he's doing good. I, I believe he's doing real well. He had 140 yards his first career start. So, I mean, he's, he's doing good. And um, the main thing with him is pass protection. Everybody sees he's a great runner. But, um, you know, the main thing about him also is, you know, psychologically. Make sure he's comfortable and trusting his abilities. All right, Marcus, we know you're scheduled to have surgery next week. We wish you the best on that and your recovery. And look forward to seeing you back out here on the field, okay? Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right, Tim. Great young man. And, uh, Bruce Ellington, by the way, was in the Wildcat formation at quarterback on that play. Went ahead for three yards. But uh, in, in many respects, Lattimore coming to South Carolina, being a part of this program, has enabled Steve Spurrier to take the Gamecocks to places they've never been. That's right, along with Clowney and other great talented players in the last couple of years, they put this program on an upward trajectory. Ellington again out of the Wildcat. And he's ahead to the 43-yard line. 
It's been a rough offensive start for the Gamecocks. Well, first of all, it's about success, and that means you got to move the chains, and that's something they haven't done. Stopped on a key fourth down opportunity there due to pressure, and then, of course, the interception on the back end, an ill-advised pass, and then the missed field goal, Timmy. This is a game about special teams play. you got to get those chip shots. As you said, it was the draw that got it. Well, look at the penalties, the missed field goal, and the pick to go with it. Third down and four coming up. They stay with the Wildcat for the third straight play. Ellington will be playing point guard for Darren Horn in January. And there's the quick hitch to Jeffrey. Boy, with that length of his, he's close to a first down. He's about a half yard shy, it would appear. But the way things have been going, uh, one would suspect that he has an opportunity to go for it yet again. Jeffrey, with that reception, sets the all-time South Carolina receptions record in the history of the school. That's the most receiving yards that he's that anyone's ever had yeah, here in passes, Columbia. Kenny McKinley passes him. In there. That's tall company. Yes, it is. And on fourth down and short, Kenny Miles gets it ahead, and it looks as though he's got the first down. Got the uh, right foot spot, and that's always a good thing from the linesman. Watkins came up to provide the tackle for Florida. Al Sean Jeffrey, most receiving yards in school history, passing Kenny McKinley. And uh, I think there have been some really good receivers here through the years, going back to the days of Sterling Sharp. Yeah. Todd Ellis was throwing him the football. Todd now the radio play-by-play -play voice and uh, practicing attorney here in Columbia, South Carolina. He's right behind Sidney Rice also for receiving That's touchdowns. Right. With 20 now, Rice with 23. Joe Morrison was the coach in those days when Todd Ellis was playing. The pass caught by Kenny Miles. Jay Howard makes the stop. Well, Al, Al Sean Jeffrey has been doing it mostly with quick screens and hitches this season. The incredible thing, though, he's been doing it without the benefit of a running game to affect defenses, and that's outstanding. You look at those long-range opportunities, those passes deeper than 15 yards. You don't see them there. It's because of the lack of the running game. Excellent job in spite of that. Second and five with the uh, trips receiving to the top of your screen and Jeffrey at the bottom. Shaw, the quarterback draw. Boy, it was well designed. Beautiful. Ahead for a first down to the 40. That's a seven-yard gain. He saw wide open terrain. Jelani Jenkins made the tackle. Well, it's the middle of the field. Back here is what he's looking at here. There's the place he's trying to exploit. Again, as you can see at the snap, that soft spot in the middle of the field, the play action makes the linebackers come up. As a result, he sees that void and just exploits it. Nice job of reading and reacting by the quarterback. Brandon Wiles comes back into the game for Kenny Miles. On first down, and he takes it off the right side. Good power running there as he gets it down to the 35-yard line. The first to make contact, Jonathan Bostic. You can see now this offense, Steve Spurrier, is content to kind of get this in bits and pieces. He's not trying to stress his quarterback because he knows there's a potential that these passes could be picked off. It's an unbelievable shift in the terms of the strategy versus what we know Steve Spurrier historically does. On second and seven. Wiles. Good cutback inside the 20 to the 15. Stretch play, beautiful job, first of all, of stretching it to the boundary as far as he could. And then as they outflanked him on the outside, he took it back underneath. Great instinctive run by Wyatt. First down, quick pitch again. They go right to the same play. And Wiles is down, burrowing to the 11-yard line. Bostic makes the stop after a gain of four. See, now South Carolina's got Florida running and chasing. This is what this young defensive unit does extremely well. They're athletic. They're young on their back end. One of the things, even though they were not productive with points, Florida's defense was on the field for over six minutes. Uh, I mean, South Carolina has controlled the football the last uh, 10 to 12 minutes of this game. And they've got it in chunks, too, and that takes a little bit out of your emotion, team. Second and five, it's Wiles again. And he is uh, tripped up by Matt Elam, the safety coming up with run support. 
Sophomore from Palm Beach Gardens made the stop. What's well, really fun to watch Steve Spurrier operate because you can see in real time he's assessing where the opportunity is, and it's it's really a beautiful thing. He's a great mind, but I talked to him personally about this. You were there, and I asked him, has he had to make an adjustment not having the possibility of the vertical passing threat there? He says, admittedly, yes, I have. Eleventh play of this drive, third and five. Looking towards Jeffrey. But he reads one and he's going to take it all the way to the house. They'll rule him in the end zone pylon. They're going to discuss it. Looks like touchdown. More often than not, if that ball hits that pylon, first of all, the eyes have it. Keeps him front side. The coverage honors it. He pulls it down and heads to that pylon, and he sticks that out yep. there. That's a touchdown, Timmy. He got it. You can see it again. If that ball touches the pylon and moves it, unless it's on the outside and he's out of bounds, clearly they're going to rule that a touchdown more often than not. Ten-yard touchdown run for Connor Shaw, and the series began with Bruce Ellington running the Wildcat. But the wild runner was Shaw, and it's 7-3 Gamecocks. Now it's time for our Home Depot Tools for Success. Well, first of all, it's about, number one, the draw by Shaw. Fine job of bringing him inside, and then how about the one by Wild? Instinctive, inside, and tremendous finish on the big end, attracting a lot of attention. Then Shaw seals it with a kiss. Nice job of bringing him in, honoring with your eyes. The back end must do it and respond. Touchdown as a result. A marvelous scoring drive of 11 plays, 62 yards. Two drives in this half of five plus minutes one produced nothing that one did come up with a touchdown and there you see the combination of rush pass for Connor Shaw and and I think getting Ellington in with the Wildcat to start the series probably benefited Connor Shaw yeah I think it helped him and I think the theme that's emerging right now Timmy is you're getting this young Florida defense to flow and honor you the eyes on the nice draw play and then the Wilds play before that is really what got that back end committed to one side that allows Shaw to pull it down and then score on the opposite side so again the misdirection big key for them Jeff Dempse is back deep remember uh, at a 99 yarder against Georgia a couple of weeks ago South Carolina gave up a touchdown out of the kicking game last week at Arkansas just as they had gotten the lead the Razorbacks took it right back on them. and here you see again high sky kick Coming down to DeBose at his 13. And he's spun down at the 22-yard line. Well, the tragedy in State College, Pennsylvania, has been the dominant story, not just in college football, but across the nation this week. Yeah, and it breaks my heart, Timmy. I would just say this. It's, it's a difficult thing for sure, but to advance this story, all institutions that have the tradition and the legacy should be circumspect at this point in time. They have the most to lose, and so the temptation to cover these types of things up is the greatest at those institutions. Tragedy for the family and the institution, to be sure. Uh, my prayers are going out to all parties. At halftime, I'll be able to give you more of my opinion when I join Gary Danielson, who's on site at the Auburn Georgia game, along with Adam Zucker and Aaron Taylor in our studio in New York. First and ten, Dimps the setback, and they go reverse. Rainey, and he stopped at the 26 yard line, a gain of five. So again, here you see. Now Florida taking a page out of what they're doing here with the outside. You can see the pressure is going to come from this direction, but you know what? You're going to run away from that. A heavy set away from it, so let's go some misdirection. They're taking a page right out of what the Gamecocks are doing, running away from the pressure, Timmy. Charlie Weiss has done a fantastic job of putting his team in a great position, Rainey and Dempsey in particular, to make outstanding plays on the perimeter and inside. It's been a very comfortable transition for him, the Will Muschamp. Brantley. Going to the uh, safety valve, and that's Rainey. And there's that quickness again. Right to the 42-yard line on a first down. 15 yards on the game. 
And Swearinger made the stop. And we'll lock this thing down, hopefully. Again, the pressure coming off the outside here is what he's trying to avoid. He does a nice job of navigating that pressure off the perimeter. The back reads the independent blocking downfield, man on man, and it's open field. I'll take number one over anybody in the nation in open field. Deontay Thompson in motion, and it's Dips bouncing outside and then cutting back. Ahead to about the 46, maybe 47 yard line. Gain of five. Jadavion Clowney made the stop. Yeah, you watch this kid Clowney, the freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina, number seven, understand that he was the most celebrated defensive recruit of last season. And frankly, there are times when he is just unbelievably talented in a given play. But the question is, is the motor there on every play? That's the key, and I'll give you my take on that hopefully a little later on. I watched quite a bit of tape on him last night in the weeks leading up to this game. Second and five, Dips. Well, the motor was working there. Did you see the quickness as he shot across? There's a fumble. And South Carolina's got it. Clowney made that play as if on cue. Coming across and diving to contribute on that stop. The ball popped loose and Rodney Polk, 45, coming out of there with it. You see, that's exactly what Clowney needs to do. He needs to affect the play every play. One of the things I saw is, is he comes down the line of scrimmage there to get that hand in and jar that ball out. He doesn't play every single down. That will happen with youth and experience. As he matures, those types of plays will be there for him. He's just got to do it with consistency, Tim. Good call by the officials. That ball was clearly out before contact to the ground was made. And it was Clowney's speed and quickness that made it happen. And a couple of turnovers now by the Gators. And the play fake, and they look long, and it's incomplete. Boy, it was right there, wasn't it? Pass was intended for Jason Barnes, number four. Well, Jason Barnes almost made an outstanding play in spite of that ball being underthrown. You can see him here. Shaw releases that ball. Doesn't put quite enough on the top of it, but in spite of that, receiver almost goes up and pulls that ball away on the back end of that play. Just a little bit sharp. Got to put a little bit more air on it and give him a chance to catch it. Senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, Jason Barnes. Well, that's the really the first time we've seen Spurrier take a shot deep. Yeah, and, and ironically, it wasn't number one. So, you know, yeah. Alshon Jeffrey, it's his chance is coming. Second and ten. Shaw stepping up, getting away from pressure again. Look out. Thought better of things when he saw Matt Elam, didn't he? He stepped out a couple of yards shy of the first down marker. Well, Matt Elam will certainly make you change your mind. Tuesday, a cop who remembers everything will turn to her family to solve a mystery you'll never forget. Mary Lou Henner guests on TV's number one new show, Unforgettable, Tuesday, only CBS. Third and two, Shaw with 62 yards on the ground, and Brandon Wiles will get this one. Look at that. Boy, the legs keep on churning, and he gets close to the first down. I believe he's going to come up about a half yard shy. Brandon Wiles. And we've seen a few fourth and shorts today for Spurrier's offense. The thing I'm impressed with what Steve Spurrier is doing, most of these opportunities for South Carolina are coming on broken plays. I mean, again, you're conceding the fact that you're affecting the defense, but you hope that your quarterback or what you design can have a positive outcome. If it doesn't, Shaw has been able to create in spite of that. Probably the greatest uh, tribute to Steve timeout, Spurrier is his ability to half. put all of his players, regardless of their talent, in a position to make plays to win football games. He's done it better than most. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. It is the first time in 46 years that Joe Paterno is not the head coach of Penn State. Interim head coach Tom Bradley leading the Nittany Lions out for senior day. A look at some of the emotional pregame scenes. Nebraska has kicked a field goal to lead 3-0 late in the second. We'll discuss the Penn State situation at halftime. Now back to Tim and Spencer in Florida and South Carolina. Adam, thank you. I cannot imagine what the uh, the scene and the emotions there must possibly be. Very unique, if not bizarre. Yeah, and I think you know folks are wondering about the outcome of the game. And I, I was suggesting to a couple of people that 
not unlike the Tiger Woods situation a while back, you cannot play a game and be in an emotional state to affect a positive outcome. I would not be shocked that this would be, and this is a minor point, mm -hmm. a lopsided victory for Nebraska. Well, we'll see. As I mentioned, uh, coming up at halftime, uh, Gary Danielson will weigh in, and uh, I'll join up with Adam and uh, and Aaron Taylor to discuss the situation in greater detail. Alshon Jeffrey is up at the top of your screen, but this is a fourth and short situation, and yet again the Gamecocks line up with an offset eye, and they run option. Pitch was a bit behind Wiles, but he gathered it in, and they have the first down inside the 30. To the 28-yard line, Bostic makes the stop. Well, Bostic does make the stop, but not before this offense continues to roll. 29 of the last 38 snaps in the game have been controlled by South Carolina on this particular play. Bostic does a job of stopping it, but not before another significant positive game. Hey, a real fullback got in on that play. <laughs> Dalton Wilson actually got a little playing time. <laughs> First and ten with Wild the lone setback. And they get out of the shotgun. He is nifty. Back those quick, short, choppy steps. Yeah. Uh, Spencer Tillman-esque. Josh <laughs> Evans, the defensive back, comes up to make the stop. Now, the Gamecocks are without timeouts. They had some decisions to make on those fourth and shorts that cost them some timeouts, but they have, with uh, just under three minutes remaining, ample time in this sequence. Wiles does have 71 yards rushing, so he's on his way to a performance near what he had against Tennessee in that 137-yard performance. Shaw with the keeper, and it's uh, Josh Evans again making the tackle. Well, South Carolina getting most of the plays now in this series directly from the sideline, but the player is down now, so the pace will slow for sure. Looks like Dominic Easley who is without question the most explosive player on that Florida defensive front. And I was about to say that that's the one guy they could ill afford to lose up front. When you look at the play again from the end zone, Dominic Easley, a significant force up 6'2", 278 pounds from Staten Island, New York. He's a player. Again, you talk about affecting the quarterback. You can look at him here. Comes to the point, tries to make that turn on the inside, avoids one player, does Shaw. Yeah, you look to the left, here's Easley... Looks as though someone rolled over that ankle there. Watch the last guy falling down on the right-hand side of the screen here. Right there. And Easley's down on the ground, and he was actually on the left-hand side of the screen. That's where he went down. Someone rolled over him. This is a young man that's uh, the best inside pass rusher that um, Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator, and, and Will Muschamp have to work with. And checking appears to be where he was rolled over. That's, that's Dan Quinn right there. Spent 10 years as an assistant coach in the National and eight of those years in the National Football League with the 49ers, Dolphins, Jets, and Seahawks. That's where he met Muschamp, was on Saban's staff in Miami. And you can see his style of play. He runs this kind of hybrid 3-4 front a lot of times. And he moves easily in others down inside. They'll move him out to a nine technique wide. So he, the flexibility that comes is eliminated if Easley's not in this field of play for this uh, Florida Gator defense. Well, it look, appeared to be checking his neck in that area. And then maybe his ankle as well. I think he they rolled over him as he had hit the turf. But he is going off under most of his own power. So that's a good sign. Thursday on CBS, a Cold War spy returns for revenge. Don't miss the new hit drama, Person of Interest. Thursday, only CBS. You know, South Carolina clearly taking control of this game, and I think a stat that probably points to it better than most. You look at their, their third down opportunities. This is the ninth here. Six of them, Timmy, he, five yards of less. They've been impressive. He looks pretty woozy. Yeah. They were checking the back of his neck, and uh, I'm sure there's great concern over there. We find out more, we'll let you know. Third down and a yard to go. Brandon Wiles, the lone setback. Shaw makes the check at the line of scrimmage, and you're right. 
They did go there with Wiles, and Evans makes the stop, but not before another first down was picked up. Yeah, and again, you can say a great job by Shaw by audibly and going away from that naked end, the one that was not blocked, did not have leverage on that left side, so he went away from it. Great heads up play by the quarterback. Again, a reminder if South Carolina wins today's game, they will amp up the pressure in Athens for the oldest rivalry in the South when Georgia takes on Auburn later today on CBS. A Gamecocks victory will force the Bulldogs to win that game if they want to make it to Atlanta for the SEC championship. And they have to win next week in Kentucky as well. Shaw again decides to ad lib, and he's been pretty good at it today. Out of bounds at the nine yard line after a gain of six. Well, again, you know, we're, we're, Allen not necessarily in the mix at the degree that he has been. That that position is going to be important for them on both sides of the ball. But Elam and company have got to find a way to identify it. Let's take a look now at that uh, Verizon red zone. I've uh, stated that many times to you before in the uh, <laughs> studio. We'll do it again here. The South Carolina team that's been less than efficient in recent games, but overall, Spurrier knows how to score touchdowns in here. He would far prefer taking sevens than threes. He likes that math. Omar Hunter makes the stop. Of Brandon Wiles. I can tell you this on this play here, they better account for the quarterback because this Florida defense is honoring the read option. They better make sure the quarterback is in place. On first and goal, Wiles again, touchdown. Now they may rule him short, may rule him just down at the half yard line. He certainly had room to get there. He lost his footing a little. And that knee touchdown just in front. Nice job by Shaw pulling it and reading yep. it properly. It was a design run. It was a good call. He's short. The previous play is under further review. Well, they will review it, but they'll find that their call was correct. Yeah, and by the way, they review every play at the college level. They try not to take perhaps quite as long, and I think the reason <laughs> for that is because they, they have the replay official upstairs that takes control over the white hat in contrast to the National Football League and yeah, they do a fantastic job if there's any doubt whatsoever they're going to make sure that they take a look at it again with Elam there number 22 in, in the way from the side it makes it difficult to see this angle should be better here you can see the knee is down yeah now but again the, without benefit the yeah there you go without benefit from the side angle it's tough to tell again because Elam was standing in the way I don't think that they'll find indisputable no, they evidence I think you'll have to say that the call was correct he was he, he was tripped up, but he was also losing his footing at that time. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Runner is short of the goal line, second down. The crowd doesn't like it, but they don't have the benefit of our technology, do they? Yeah, that's right. And, and even if they didn't have the benefit of it, the, the official can't reverse that yeah. if they don't have uh, you know, clear evidence. Second down and goal, 43 seconds remaining, but the Gamecocks without any timeouts remaining. And that figures into the equation here from a play calling standpoint. That pass right now, too. Wiles, the lone setback. Shaw takes it himself. Touchdown. Or run it. Well, it's not difficult, not rocket science. Spread them out and then try to find the softest spot as you possibly can along that line of scrimmage. Shaw does. His second touchdown of this quarter. Jay Wooten in for the extra point. Well, the shifty sophomore from Branch, Georgia, Flowery Branch, Georgia, is maybe amping up the pressure in his home state. The Gamecocks lead it by nine. Take a look at our scoring drive and people that know me well, including our statistician, Ethan Cooperson. My math was incorrect. It is an 11 point lead after an 11 play drive. And uh, again, Connor Shaw has. Uh, been able to utilize his skills just the way Steve Spurrier would want to draw it up. I mean, the 
The head ball coach loves to take a player and give him the best possible collection of plays to make him successful. Yeah, I think a lot of times people forget that, yeah, you can draw them up that way, but those coaches are paid a lot of money yeah. to stop you from doing exactly what you're designed to do. And Shaw's taking advantage of it by creating in an improvisational way to score touchdowns and move the chains. Jeff Demps is back deep, but I dare say he won't touch it. Uh, it is a sky kick, and Demps is going to touch it, but he'll have to run up to get there. And uh, it's been a well-designed strategy of their special teams to force the ball to stay in the air much of this game on kicks, an eight-yard return. Well, coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Adam Zucker, along with Aaron Taylor, Gary Danielson, and yours truly will examine the controversy and tragedy at Penn State. Plus all the scores and highlights that's all coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. John Brantley hoping for a, a breakout game of sorts today. Hasn't gone the way that he would like. He'll take a knee. And there's a flag down on the field, though. They were ready to sprint to the locker room. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the formation. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. For the record, that, that is happening a bit more this season. <laughs> yes, they did get rid of the illegal participation call. That's a thing of the past, but that 12 men uh, situation jumped up and grabbed Nick Saban at an inappropriate time in overtime in the game of the century. <laughs> Take a knee again, and that'll do it for the first half. The capacity crowd here at williams Bryce Stadium has been treated to a nice performance. Brantley exchanges pleasantry with the opposition, and they head to the locker room. 160 yards rushing for Connor Shaw, two rushing touchdowns in this game. He has been dynamite. And Lewis Johnson is standing by with the head ball coach. All right, thanks so much. Well, Coach, I thought we'd be talking about the mistakes and miscues of this first half, but then Connor Shaw comes around. What do you make of it? Well, Florida's they play a lot of deep zone. We don't have much throwing room down there, uh, but fortunately we can run the ball. So uh, that's 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 the game plan if they, you know, play that deep zone. If our defense is playing super, and uh, we just got to keep playing two more quarters and not give them anything. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Tim? That's the end of the first half. Our score, 14 to 3, South Carolina. Now let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studios. Adam? Well, coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Aaron and I will be joined by Gary Danielson and Tim Brando to talk about Joe Paterno and the Penn State scandal after this word from your local station. Time here in Columbia, the Gamecocks lead the Gators 14 to 3 in this pivotal SEC Eastern Division showdown. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Lewis Johnson, the Connor Shaw story 35 of the last 45 plays. Yeah. South Carolina had it. They get the ball to start the second half. That's the story of the first half. The unscripted production from the quarterback position. Uh, Connor Shaw was absolutely outstanding. The draw play really comes to mind. And when you look at him, he sells it. He sells the eyes, everything. Clearly, Florida responded to it. He pulled it down and scored with it on this particular play here. So again, and the trifecta from Connor Shaw affecting the defense with his unscripted play. Let's take a look at the first half trends. We touched on just how he dominated the game, but Wiles also was a great counter punch in that run game, and without him, Shaw probably wouldn't have had those big plays. Yeah, he kept the defense honest by having the modicum of success inside between the tackles, which you have to honor. We'll see the second half about that two-deep shell that, of course, Steve Spurrier talked about. Let's see if they change that. We came into the game thinking so highly of John Brantley and that perhaps with Demps and Rainey both healthy that he could shine today to this point. They've not been able to get that offense on track. And I know Brantley feels better. He just can't find open receivers. I think the athleticism of this young Gamecock defense is really what's been curtailing that success early on. But Demps and Rainey did have success early on on the boundaries and the perimeter. But since that time, inside, it's gone dry for them. And as a result, they don't have the breadth and width of their offensive production uh, available. Remember, it's been over a month since this football team, South Carolina, has gotten to play at home. I think they've gotten a little adrenaline from that. This return from Bruce Ellington 
is beyond the 30 to about the 33 yard line. So a 25 yard kickoff return for Bruce Ellington, who's run a little wildcat as well. You look at the first half possessions, the Gamecocks could not take advantage of a short field after getting a turnover early on. Lost the ball on downs, then the pick. And after the missed field goal, uh, they decided to uh, let Connor Shaw take care of business on the ground. And that's really been the story to this game. Yeah, the one thing that jumps out with that stat, it's the mistakes that determine big games. And this is a big game, particularly for South Carolina. Wiles, beyond 35 to 36, and then they gain tackling. And the whistle did blow. And now a little anger coming from Easley. He may be in a bad frame of mind after what happened to him with that injury late in the second quarter, a gain of four. No flags. Well, it's a short yardage play, and again, the nice little zone read in the middle. Guys pushing him back. Again, this is going to happen from time to time, but that's just guys being aggressive to the point. The little push near the end of that is what instigated that problem. Second down and six. Wiles remains in the backfield. We'll take it again. Just short of the first down by about a yard. He picked up five. Tripped up by Jonathan Bostic. Well, the vision of Wiles as he finds those little voids on the backside just to the left of where the hole was intended to go. Again, this is reading, reacting, getting it from the running back position and quarterback spot. I, I really believe that uh, Steve Spurrier went to school on what uh, Mark Richt and Georgia did. They, they ran it right at Florida. That undersized defensive front having a real problem stopping South Carolina on the ground. Now, on that keeper, he may have come up a little short. Jonathan Bostic was able to get some... Uh, some surge and maybe stop him short of the first down. So yet again, another fourth and a yard or maybe fourth and less than a yard coming up for the Gamecocks in their own territory. One of the things we're going to keep our eye on, I don't think South Carolina is going to have the success running the football this half that they did last half, mainly because Florida has now come out of that two deep shell that Steve Spurrier alluded to right before the break, allowing one more man to come up around the line of scrimmage. So Florida in a better position to stop the run. They're going to punt it away. Joey Scribner Howard comes into the game, averaging 39 per boot. And back deep. The Gators at his own 10. That's Deontay Saunders. Marker's down. It's a short punt, and the bounce is a Gator one. And it'll be down to the 30, but we do have a flag down. So we'll check that out. Could be good field position for Florida for their opening series and a break for them considering that uh, South Carolina had a third and short and could not convert a first down with decent field position and all important in a game like this where again you're just a couple scores away from making it happen. Yeah. Penalty apparently against uh, the Gamecocks. They may have to do it again. Florida because of the poor punt. We'd probably love to start if it's not a uh, pre snap foul. We'll have to wait and see. Only a 27 yard boot, so one would think the Gators may have nullified and said, uh, We declined the penalty. We'll take it right where we've got it. We have an illegal shift on the left wide receiver of the kicking team. That five yard penalty will be attacked on from the end of the play. First down. Okay. Uh, Miles, Matt Austin with the uh, explanation. So the Gators get even better field position. This is a real break for them because you know Spurrier was thinking, hey, we, let's get the ball, have a nice drive, take command of this game, and they're stopped on third and fourth and short. They have to punt away and give up field position. Steve likes to score. Not a productive drive to open the second half. First down, Florida. Rainey in the backfield. He gets ahead to about the 40 yard line. Call it a four yard pickup. Haven't seen much of Trey Burton utilized in this game. One of the great athletes, a big kid. 
You'd think we'd see maybe some wildcat from Florida, but we have it to this point. Rainey stopped in his tracks. Great penetration again. Travian Robertson coming in there, the senior from Larnburg, North Carolina. One of the things we're noticing, more bodies around the line of scrimmage for South Carolina, committed to filling up those voids that were there in the first half where they got gashed, sometimes by those smallish backs, Rainey and Dimps, not going to happen this half. Another third and long coming up. They're on their feet in Columbia. Rainey moves into the slot. Brantley fires and he's got his man. That's Jordan Reed, and that's a first down to the 41-yard line of South Carolina, a 20-yard gain. Well, the 20-yard gain made possible by the zone coverage that the Gamecocks chose to employ. And again, you're going to see Reed set it down right here, number 11, right between the two defenders, and he splits those defenders. The bigger body guy finishes. He wins that battle every time against the zone coverage. Rainey nice. pops outside. Gets away. What a spin. Inside the 30 and down to the 25. Boy, you, you go high on him, and he will, as you love to say as a mini back, spin, baby, spin. Oh, spin. That's what he did. 17 yards on the pickup. Instinctive play again. Penetration early kind of gets him off his guard. I think what happened to this play, a directions call by South Carolina, opened it up and left a void for him on the outside, and he takes advantage of it. Big gainer. Well, you see the numbers. Eight carries, 47 yards. Quick hitch. Caught by Thompson, but he stopped immediately. See, now, Timmy, you're looking at a chess match taking place right now. Clearly, it's obvious in the early going in the second half that South Carolina is committed to stopping the interior run game. So now, Charlie Weiss has got to paint the edges with this offense. You know, very quietly, uh, Spencer, in man coverage, CC Whitlock, number 12, and Stefan Gilmore, number 5, the corners have done a pretty good job today. Mm -hmm. Brantley. Against that zone coverage, finds his man inside the 15. He got walloped. Deontay Thompson made the catch, and he's limping a little bit. Well, here's Brandley under duress. He does a nice job of flashing the eyes there on that particular play. But you know what? The pressure's coming early and often. The backside, the front side. Brantley never saw it happen there. That was Paul here. Does a nice job of getting to the quarterback. First and 10 with the ball. At the 13. Dimps the setback. And he'll carry it off the left side. And he stopped at the 8. Melvin Ingram coming over. Antonio Allen as well. 26 and 6. Collaborating for the Gamecocks. Now we'll see how Florida navigates the same problem that South Carolina faced when they got into the red area. We'll see if Rodney Paul and company can Melvin Ingram can stop them once they get inside that red zone. Some of the issues that the Gators have had have come because they've had to concentrate so much on blocking Ingram or Jadavion Clowney. Other guys have gotten free and wreaked havoc on Brantley. Second down and five. Rainey. Again, a nice spin move, and he negotiates to the five for a pickup of three. He'll be two yards shy of a first down. They can get a first down without benefit of the touch. And Devin Taylor, number 98, made the stop. Everyone's back there, of course, along with Byron Gerardu as well. All those defensive players taking edges, shooting the gap, trying to affect this offense. Third down. Left tackle. Movement. And a flag. Xavier Nixon. Before the snap, false start. 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Xavier Nixon, the junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, moved into the starting role. With Patchen playing right tackle for Chaz Green, who's been a little banged up. 
Now that backs the Gators up to the 10 yard line. Well, Xavier Nixon's outside there on that left tackle spot. He's the furthest away from the quarterback, so it's harder for him to hear. It's going to get even noisier now that they've jumped off sides. He's got to be careful. Or rather, a procedure penalty. He's got to be careful. Yeah. Listen. Maybe thinking more about a shot to the end zone now than you were on third and two. It's now third and seven. Brantley with room finds his man but falling down was A.C. Leonard. He had lost a little traction and was beginning to fall as he made the catch. And again Swearinger, D.J. Swearinger, the junior from Greenwood, South Carolina was right there to pull him down. Swearinger showed tremendous closing speed on that play. Again, what looked like a, not a catch but also plus yardage after that Swearinger right there. Johnny on the spot to keep it limited. Sturgis. 18 of 20 this year in field goals. This one from 24 yards out. And he boots it through. Now the Gators come away with three. And Will Muschamp will take that. Plenty of time remaining here in Columbia. The scoring drive for Florida, 10 plays, 58 yards, 526 off the clock. Culminating with the Sturgis field goal. Brantley was 4-4 four four on that drive. You look at uh, John alongside uh, Charlie Weiss. While the timing may have been difficult um, for him this year in the injury, Spencer, I think... Uh, Charlie Weiss certainly was a find for John Brantley's career. Yeah, it really was. But again, the struggles here today continue. Brantley's passing 37 yards in the entire first half, Tim. And on that last drive, 36 on that last one alone. And this is a problem that they had uh, last week as well in the win over Vanderbilt. So it's problematic. They're looking for a solution via the passing game. Ellington and Gilmore back deep. And Brad Phillips will kick it away. Ellington from his two. Out of bounds, just past the 30 at the 32 yard line. That's where the Gamecocks will have it with better than seven minutes remaining in Columbia. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by John Hancock Mutual Fund, LG, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and by Bud Light. Here in Columbia, South Carolina, the Gamecocks lead it 14 to 6. Now it's time for our AFLAC trivia question. Who is the only University of Florida student athlete to win a national championship in two sports? That's easy. Okay. <laughs> Do we, we get a chance to answer that? Maybe later. Okay. May, right. Maybe later. You watch Vernon Gary enough to know that, <laughs> don't you? Are you watching those I other games when we're in the studio? Because it was so easy. <laughs> Connor Shaw leads his troops back out onto the field. You see the. Uh, Discrepancy for Florida in time of possession. I, I thought that was key. Even when South Carolina didn't score, they had a six minute drive, and then they followed that up by dominating really um, 35 of the last 45 plays of the first half. Shaw rolling and throwing it incomplete. Intended for Ace Sanders. Sophomore from Bradenton, Florida. Yeah, Tim, you were talking about time of possession being key here in the, in the first half and now into the second half for South Carolina. But the difference in the game really has been Florida in the red zone. You know, their two red zone trips just produced two field goals. And ultimately, South Carolina's two red zone trips for Steve Spurrier produced two touchdowns. So, again, it's efficiency in that red zone area that's been the difference in this game. Miles the long setback on second and ten. That's going to be the flag over the back. Jalen Watkins, the left corner, a bit prematurely went through him on the backside. 
Pass interference, defense number 14. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Well, back judge is going to catch this every time. Jalen Watkins here, number 14, in the back. You can see him. He closes on this ball, but he wraps that right arm around the receiver. They're going to catch that every time, Tim. Sanders was the intended receiver. <laughs> he knew it was coming. From the 43 first down, they go with an eye set this time. Walter Wilson, the fullback. Back to that two deep shell now. Boy, that was a hit. How about that hit from Watkins? <laughs> he took it out, getting the flag, lowering those shoulders and just going right into Kenny Miles. Yeah, well, that's the thing you got to do. He, he nailed Miles on that play, but when you're playing a two deep shell, you better make sure you make every tackle because you're playing essentially with one less man around the line of scrimmage because you sacrificed it with that deep safety. So a sure tackling key to making this cover two shell work. Second and nine. Nothing doing for Kenny Miles. And let's go back to Adam Zucker in our studio for a John Hancock update. All right, Tim, thank you. Penn State in a struggle on the field right now. Nebraska, this is Taylor Martinez running the option, pitching it to Rex Burkhead, who goes 14 yards for the touchdown. Cornhuskers up on Penn State, 17 nothing. Tim and Spencer. Remember, this was a, uh, a Nebraska team that was hurting a bit themselves after getting uh, hammered by Northwestern. And uh, losing the advantages they had in their division of the Big 12. So a nice uh, return on the road for Bo Pelini's team. Third and nine here, and Shaw decides to tuck it. And he'll take it out of bounds at the 45 yard line. And Timmy, again, to just to pick up real quick on that point about Nebraska Penn State, the outcome of that game is as much a result of what's happening off the field as it is on. That's not to discredit or take anything away from what Nebraska's doing, but emotionally, those players are impacted by Penn State. There are things and dynamics working that are far beyond the field of play. Yeah, you, you had to figure from an athletic standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, it could go uh, one of two ways, either really, really positively for the Penn State players or, or very poorly, very quickly. It appears that it's the latter. Low punt with that over end over end trajectory. Very, very effective <laughs> nice. for Scribner Howard. And it rolls dead inside the five yard line. Not bad for a kid that walked on originally. 50 yards the boot. Gators will have it on their doorstep. Will it be the Roosters day here in Columbia 14 to 6 South Carolina with the lead and coming up uh, there are some interested parties in Athens Georgia the oldest rivalry in the South Auburn and Georgia and uh, in this series teams that have had something on the line have had difficulty look at that. <laughs> Absolutely, and this series is not unlike what we saw last week in, in what was de facto national championship game in a lot of people's mind. I don't necessarily agree with that, but in that series, it now stands at 28, 13, and 1 for the road team. And this series is not unlike that in that the team with the most on the line, as you said, tends to come out on the short end. No question, and what uh, Steve Spurrier wants to do is have um, Georgia aware that they must win by virtue of a South Carolina victory against Florida today. Chris Rainey the lone setback and he's a good five yards deep into the end zone. Play fake Brantley. Unloads and he's got Jordan Reed. Ahead to the 16 yard line. Now that's the kind of throw that in the warmups Brantley looked to be making. He is a big time passer. Yeah, and it's a gutsy call too on a crossing route that needs to take time to play off of play action. And you can see Reed making his way through the coverage there, splits it, not sets it down, but he continues on because it's a man look. And that's the rule. Charlie Weiss dialing up a risky but very productive play backed up in his own end zone. Ask any scout, they'll tell you the 15 yard out is one of the most important passes you've got to throw. At the next level. Brantley again, this time to a streaky receiver 
down the sideline, incomplete. Andre DeBose, the intended receiver. Let's go downstairs to Lewis Johnson. Hey, Tim, been hanging out over here behind the Florida bench. Kept a real close eye on Brantley here as he was sitting talking to Charlie Weiss. He's got that ankle that's still bugging him. He's got the support brace on a tape on the inside of the sock, and then the shoe is spatted. But he spent a lot of time talking to Charlie Weiss, who told us that when he got to Florida, Brantley was a beat-down guy. Everybody had blamed him. Everything had fallen on his shoulders. But now you fast forward to the Vanderbilt win, says that he's never been higher, feels, shows, and acts like the legitimate quarterback he is. They need to see some of that right now. There's no de denying he's the motor to this Florida team. They went 0 for October in large measure because he was not out there. Under pressure, he'll have to hit the deck quickly and does down at the 20-yard line. Let's go back to New York. Adam Zucker with an update. All right, Tim, thanks. How do you like this? Brandon Pendergrass tearing up 33 yards of grass as Wake Forest has scored 21 points in 4 minutes and 11 seconds at Clemson. A win would put the Demon Deacons in the Atlantic Division driver's seat, Tim. Well, we've seen Jim Grobe do this before at Wake Forest, haven't we? Got them to a BCS Bowl just a few years ago. Clemson, of course, still very much a part of the South Carolina Gamecocks schedule's future. But now it's third and seven for the Gators. Empty backfield. Brantley unloads, incomplete, but a marker down. Reed, the intended receiver. Looked as though Antonio Allen may have gotten him with some contact. Yeah, Antonio Allen playing that spur position. May have gotten that hand in there, but boy, that looks risky. Pass interference. Defense number 26. Ball to be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, time now for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Okay. Who's the only University of Florida student athlete to win a national title in two sports? The answer, Jeff Dimps. 2008 football and 2010-11 indoor track and field. He's not bad outdoors either. Yeah, he's really good. I mean, technically <laughs> that question is correct, but he actually won more than one national oh, title. No, you're right. Multiple. Yeah. <laughs> as a team champion, though, he's part of a team championship as well. He's had some individual titles to go along with that. You want that guy carrying your anchor leg of the 4x100 anytime. First down and 10. You see the penalty yardage for South Carolina doubling that of Florida. Speaking of doubling, Florida was 79 yards this half. South Carolina with just 12. Rainey and Burton now both in the backfield. And it's Rainey. Well, he's tough to find, but uh, once the Gamecocks did, he got hammered. Just a gain of two. Big time pop up front. Timmy, I can tell you again, South Carolina's committed to stopping this run game. They've committed an extra body around the line of scrimmage. Again, you can hear the popping coming at the end of the play. Mm. There was one huge hit by Travian Robertson, 42 of South Carolina. Rainey ahead to the 32, maybe the 33 yard line. Well, student body left there on that particular play. Clowney wind up shutting that play down. There's a couple of folks down, including Clowney. That and Melvin Ingram. Ingram's down, too. This could be a huge loss for them. He's their big-time playmaker. Absolutely. You can see Melvin Ingram out here stretching and working that play to the outside, trying to set that corner. He does a good job getting in there, but gets rolled on top yeah. of. That's the problem with that play. And again, you can see him sheds his would-be blocker. Watch he gets the rolled right up on yeah. the back end. Right ankle and knee. You're always concerned about that. Dominic easily had that happen for Florida, although they rolled over the top of his head. They'll check on him and we'll come back. Tonight, following our postgame show on CBS, Gary Danielson answers your college football questions. Live from the SEC on CBS Cruiser. Watch the fifth quarter at cbsports.com slash Gary. There's um, Melvin Ingram. Boy, he is um, the most complete player that they have on their defense. And you know they want to get him out there again as soon as he possibly can. 
His, his motor never stops, and, and Will Muschamp knows he's got to contend with him on the outside. I was watching some drills of him and some coverage uh, events, with, which you expect the secondary guys to be engaged in, but he looks like a cornerback the way he covers. He is so athletic, Timmy. I was just floored to see the athleticism of England. Burton and Hunter Joyer, 41 now in the backfield for Florida. Only one of five on third down conversions. It's Burton, an option to pass. But he decides to run and he's got a first down. He was looking downfield trying to get Deontay Thompson, but he was well covered. Well, it was a great job of at least causing the attention. This is the way the quarterback heads, but the play is ultimately going to wind up coming back the opposite direction. Nice design because you attract a lot of attention with the games and deals. Brantley sold it because the defender came right in his face. The ball was headed to the opposite direction, however. First down. And we've got uh, flags. Prior to the snap, false start. 64 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Lewis Johnson's got uh, the news on. Uh, Melvin Ingram. Yeah, Tim came over favoring that left shoulder, and after some diagnostic testing, they discovered a stinger, but said he's okay to go back in. That is good news. The old stinger. <laughs> by the way, speaking of quick guys, we've got one down there in uh, Lewis Johnson, by the way. He still looks like he can run, doesn't he? He's <laughs> lean, athletic, rangy guy. First down and 15. with plenty of time finds Reed and Jordan Reed is hammered at the 40 yard line boy what a hit pick up of seven with the ball at the 40 yard line that was Reginald Bowens doing a tremendous job of exploding at the end of that play that's how you make your presence felt finish the play drive through the ball carrier or the receiver Bear with us. We are having a few technical difficulties, some uh, audio hits that you may be hearing, but we are working feverishly to take care of them. On second down, stretch play from Demps. Wow. Corralled in a very big way by Swearinger, 36. Uh, the junior from Greenwood, South Carolina, was quick to get over there. Well, the junior comes with intent. He comes at a nice angle up the field here to make an outstanding play. Coming through all of that trash and garbage to get to him, Swearinger does a tremendous job of finishing that play. Third down and six. Gators trying to become bowl eligible. South Carolina looking to apply pressure to Georgia later today for their matchup with Auburn. DeBose will come flank to the top of your screen. Reed, who's been a go-to guy of late, is in the slot near side. Pass a bit overthrown intended for Rainey. And a marker down. Again, it's Brantley down again. The pressure on him. Oh, did Clowney get him late? Well, let's take a look. First of all, roughing the passer, seven of the defense. Yep, he did. Early, dramatic first down. Well, uh, freshman mistake there. He knows it, saying my bad. He does. He touches himself in the chest area. He, the arm over does a nice job to get to the quarterback, but he's got to understand, even though he does try to pull off, if your head is anywhere near the handle of that quarterback, you're going to get called on that play. And that's unfortunate, too, because he, he did a, a fantastic job on the front end of that play, making the tackle miss him to get to the quarterback. Ingram was in on that last play, but uh, came off favoring his shoulder. And so now he's out of the game, and it's first and 10, Florida at the 44th South Carolina. Rainey burrows to the 40. On the so a pickup of about four, second and six coming up, and the clock winding down here in the third. And we have come to the conclusion of the third quarter here at Williams Bryce. 14 to 6, South Carolina will return after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the Home Depot, SEC on CBS.
Along with Lewis Johnson and Spencer Tillman, 14 to 6, our score. Tim Brando, as you look at our standings, you see how important this game is. South Carolina wants to get back to Atlanta for a second consecutive year. Their only chance is if they win today and get some help with Georgia possibly losing to Auburn or, or maybe Kentucky later on. But, but, but Spencer, you've seen Brantley's success force a little bit of a change. Dallas Johnson's defense for South Carolina. Absolutely. What they're doing is they're moving out of that two deep shell look into a single safety look, and sometimes they were rolling it. Uh, the difference of significant of that is you now have an extra defender around the line of scrimmage and again they're doing the same thing that Florida did to them in the first half. Six, second down and six as we begin play here in the fourth. Rainey will take it. Not much room this time. Again, it's going to be a reoccurring theme. Both these teams know that they've had success running interior. As a result, what you just saw, that short game, was a result of an extra defender around the line of scrimmage. A single safety look. They'll roll into it late, give South Carolina more bodies around the line of scrimmage. In this half, Jordan Reed, number 11, has been a guy that uh, Brantley's looked to. Frankie Hammond hasn't had a touch. He and DeBose go to the top of your screen. Reed is in the slot right. Single safety. Brantley is sacked, and it's Ingram. He's back. Ball is loose. Clowney comes away with it. Was there a whistle? Looks as though there may have been. Important that he's out there. Take a look again at the sight and sounds of the play. I never heard a whistle, did you? I never heard a Tim. I think South it. Carolina got the football. Or at the very least, the, 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 the ground can't cause it, the, uh, a fumble, but uh, I didn't hear the whistle. The crowd was so... Uh, the decibels were so high. Well, the bigger story is South Carolina's defensive response certainly responded admirably to the ground success that Florida was experiencing right. to begin this second half. That is a ball hawking defense. That they're stripping it as best they can, but he was on the ground. They ruled him down at the 49 yard line. Well, there's a reason why they're the second best team defensively against the pass in the nation. Again, it's because not necessarily they're so active on the back end or athletic. It's that front that continues to get pressure on the quarterback. And you can see it again here. Brantley does a nice job of selling it, but the pressure is upfield. Look at the two ends, including Clowning Company. They are all over the quarterback playing on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. I don't care how big you are, how much of a quintessential drop back quarterback you are. If they're playing on that opposite line, that disrupts your timing. Well, this should be the replay that they need to see. It appears the ball was stripped after he'd hit the ground. I think it's inconclusive because his back is to us and it's yeah. very difficult to see Brantley from this angle you may be able to see a little bit more no. but I doubt it because no. again number six is going to obscure it the ball is looks like it's in his belly but you can't assume anything and they're not going to reverse or change anything unless they can see conclusive evidence no indisputable video evidence to change that one would think they're there you see you see Clowney stripping it away that's once they're already mm -hmm. on the ground. Tough day, though, for, for John Brantley. Things were going well, but again, bogged down by the pressure. I think the Gamecocks, in so many ways, because of Melvin Ingram and Jadavion Clowney, two big-time playmakers, they sort of force offensive lines to account for them. And in so doing, it frees up a lot of other guys to have their way. And that is correct. And it goes beyond that. Again, that's one of the chief reasons why Charlie Weiss came to this pistol offense, because it allows the quarterback to turn either way. I think he turned his microphone off when he said <laughs> as opposed to turning it on but the play the field uh, the call on the field stands. Well the uh, referees Mike did not uh, work in the house as well as on television so some gremlins with his microphone as well. Fourth and 16. Ace Sanders is back deep as Kyle Christie looks to beat it away. Again. Angling for the sidelines and a fair catch called for by Sanders at the 13 yard line. A 38 yard punt. Still a one possession game.
It's time for our Geico Game Recap. Caleb Sturgis began it with a 21-yard field goal to make it 3-0 Florida. Gamecocks finally got it going. And Connor Shaw culminated a nice drive with a 10-yard scoring run, hitting the pylon. Followed that up with a lengthy drive, ending with a quarterback sneak. And then the finishing touches to Florida's most recent drive to make it a 14-6 game, 24 yards by Caleb Sturgis. And our score now 14-6, South Carolina leading Florida. And this week, Dave's all new with presidential candidate Herman Cain, plus Jerry Seinfeld. And Monday, don't miss How I Met Your Mother star Jason Siegel. Then catch Craig. I love Craig. Only CBS. <laughs> I love that guy. Let's look at Steve Spurrier there. 198 yards, 14 points in the first half for South Carolina. 12 yards, zero points in the second half, Timmy. Coach Spurrier trying to coach him up and get some production. It may not be as artistic as the fun and gun days for Steve, but he'll take some of those ugly wins. Uh, and he's had his fair share of them here at South Carolina. Both of these programs, when you think about it, Spencer, are just maybe a few players short at mission critical positions for the coaches to do what they really want to do. Yeah, that, the, the decision for both of them to take what they have and work with it on display here today. Shaw coming back into the boundary, hammered after a gain of only one. Josh Evans, number 24, makes the stop. Let's go to Adam Zucker now for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. All right, Tim, how about a 28-year-old Heisman winner? Brandon Whedon today, over 400 yards, five touchdowns. This one to Josh Stewart for 66 yards. They lead by 57 in Lubbock, and they've already gone to the bullpen. Two other quarterbacks undefeated. Case Keenum dominant in Tulane on Thursday. And Kellen Moore facing TCU today. He struggled in two meetings against them. Now back to you. Indeed. And uh, while we were away, Case Keenum getting up gingerly after absorbing that hit from Josh. Excuse me. I, I beg your pardon. Connor Shaw after looking at Case Keenum on graphics there a moment ago. Watch this as he gets hit that shoulder. Spencer. Yeah the play comes and it's inside out tackling gang tackling. And here's another look and it nails him pretty good too. He turns his back. You know one of the things you'll learn when you're coming into a, a, a defender is not to turn your back on him because it exposes your ribs. Listen to this. So that means Bruce Ellington's going to come in to run Wildcat. He's been out there five other times. And here he is running it again up to the 15-yard line is Ellington. They used him in their opening scoring drive to get that first touchdown. He was in for the first three plays of that series that led to Connor Shaw's 10-yard touchdown run. Yeah, with 13-10 left to play, this is a most critical stop here for this Florida defense. They get great field position if they're for, able to force a punt here and then reverse the trend so far. Well, you got to think that they'll be very careful here with Ellington in there. Oh, he can throw it, and he's looking to throw it. And finally hammered out of bounds at the 12-yard line by Matt Elam. Number 22, double-deuce Matt Elam forcing that particular play there. And again, they had a manned up did Florida on the back end of that defense. Sound coverage, sound pressure up front, forcing South Carolina to punt this one away. Well, it was a loss of five yards, but it was a wise choice by Ellington. Yes, it was. And I wasn't sure he was able to get rid of that ball anyway, the way he was carrying it, you know, down low. A polished quarterback would have had that ball up high. Deontay Saunders is back deep for Florida. Oh, that was nearly blocked. Joey Squidner Howard did manage to get it out there. And here's Saunders looking to find the edge. He's run out of bounds just inside midfield. Florida will have it at the 49 yard line. A 43 yard boot, a six yard return. Oh, how close was this? Sharif Floyd. He's done it before. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Napa. Outback Steakhouse. Dr. Pepper. And by Jeep. 
Our score here in Columbia, South Carolina, the Gamecocks leading the Gators 14 to 6. Regional action tomorrow, the NFL on CBS. Most will see Buffalo at Dallas. And there you see the remainder of those matchups. It all begins with JB and the quartet. The NFL today at noon Eastern time. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Houston Texans looking to get to 7-3. and three. Yeah. Wade Phillips, a number one rated defense. Go from 30 to 1 in a single year. That's pretty impressive. And Buffalo. Be interesting to see uh, Chan Gailey going back to Dallas. Uh, yes. As a head coach with the Bills. Chris Rainey, the lone setback. And he gets it. Look out. Mm. Watch out for the speed and the cut. He may break it. This could be the play. Rainey is finally caught from behind at the two. Stephon Gilmore coming over there to save the touchdown. 47 yards. You talk about creativity on this particular play. Rainey does an excellent job of coming downhill. He'll ultimately wake his way all the way back the opposite field. Instinctive running. Downfield blocking by his opposite wide receiver. And again, but for the saving tackle, we got ourselves another ball game here. This is yeah. getting close, Timmy. First and go, left two. Trey Burton is coming to the game. Rainey with 109 yards, 81 of them in this half. Mm. Is that Brissett? Jacoby Brissett in the game at quarterback looking for Jordan Reed. And it goes down incomplete. And Reed had that one. He would have been wide open. Brissett with a nice job of showing his composure. The play action pass out the ball under pressure. And again, Reed just falls down. All alone uncovered. Oh boy. The nice touch pass. Reed backing up and just loses control of his feet there and falls down. This is the young freshman from West Palm Beach that had to start his career at, of all places, Death Valley in Baton Rouge. But he has had some snaps. Pressure. Rolling right. He cuts inside. Brissett, touchdown. Wow. Brissett with a Tim Tebow S finish on that play. Pulls it down again under all type of pressure from the backside. And he levels those shoulders and takes that big long frame of his and plows it in for the score. Timmy, look at him pull it down and just shows you that leverage. Here's the old rule. Low man wins down on the goal line. And it does appear they will go for two to try to knock this thing up at 14. Brissett in the game. William T. Dwyer High School. Weiss, Charlie Weiss told us he can't wait to watch this kid develop and battle for the starting position next year. Here we go. Rainey, the lone setback. Play fake to Hammond. Brissett trying to do it on his own. Dumps it off and it's intercepted in the end zone. Nice job defensively by Marty Marquette, the senior from York, South Carolina. Jacoby Brissett does it on his own. The freshman says, I've got two good legs. Let me take it in. But on the two-point conversion, the Gamecocks defense had an answer, forcing the young man to dump it off and hope. But it springs eternal in South Carolina. Stay, stay tuned because, uh, time permitting, the Jeep postgame show will be coming your way on CBS Sports. Adam Zucker and Darren Taylor back at Studio 43. There's a look at your scoring drive. Just three plays, 49 yards, only 51 ticks off the clock, and it's Brissett with a two-yard touchdown run. Timmy, Bill Walsh, and coaches I've worked with over the years often talk about ebb and flow in the course of the game, and this one, it shows up in the numbers. First down this half, Florida has eight. South Carolina with just one. Well, yeah, that's been... An issue, I think, in large measure because of the injury to Shaw. And we'll find out more about his status momentarily. Back deep for the Gamecocks, Bruce Ellington and Stefan Gilmore. Ellington's done a little bit of everything in today's game. Ellington. 
Bruce Ellington beyond the 40 to the 42 yard line and it was Brad Phillips the kicker that made the stop tripping him up. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson. Well Jim you can begin to feel the tension down here in the South Carolina sideline. Connor Shaw came off a few moments ago in some pain. I was told that when he fell to the ground he hit his lower back. They looked at him but Shaw stayed close to the sideline close to the coaches to show himself ready to go back in put his helmet back on and I believe he's gone back out on the field. And there's the play that Lewis is talking about again. We're talking about the importance of not turning your back to defenders because your back is exposed for the most part. Three snap movement up front. Florida may have encroached. But there could have been premature movement on South Carolina side. We'll let them uh, sort it out. Prior to the snap, false start. 55 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. TJ Johnson is guilty. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. And there he is, Dalton Wilson. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the South Carolina General Scholarship Fund. Congratulations to that young man. Williston Elko High School in Williston, South Carolina is home. First and 15. Shaw with time, looping it deep, and it's wow. caught beautifully by Sanders inside the 20. Oh, that was an ace. Now, this is the second time that Jalen Watkins has been beaten. I'm telling you, you couldn't have placed this ball any more perfect that allowed him to run underneath it. Again, Shaw, those ribs are just fine. Pure extension on this ball, puts it on that outside shoulder, only where he can catch it. Unbelievable job, Jalen Watkins on the coverage. Denied. That may be the best throw Connor Shaw's had as a collegiate. Wiles is down to the 10-yard line. Pickup of seven for him. Maybe eight. Josh Evans makes the tackle. This is where South Carolina's got to reverse that red zone trend that we talked about. They've been on it ahead of it. They can continue to build on what they've done in the red zone, scoring two touchdowns. Wiles again, this time runs into some heavy artillery. Ronald Powell, the young man that plays that uh, buck linebacker position, can line up on the ground or be upright at that position. It's what uh, Dan Quinn and Will Muschamp like to do, mix and match with those linebackers that can uh, beat you with quickness, if not their strength. Wiles has stopped behind the line of scrimmage. A very active day for Josh Evans. He's really played big here in the second half. That's an excellent open field tackle. Now Evans on that play and you can if you want a player to make a difference in the game is to be on an island and make a play an open space on a pretty good back in wilds you can see form tackle there wrapping them up and bring them down you want a textbook at home you little leaguers out there that's how you tackle these three are very important and remember Wooden missed earlier wide right that was a 27 this will be a 27 yard attempt he got through that one an answer from the Gamecocks. Florida closes to within two. And off that huge pass to Sanders, South Carolina gets a tray. South Carolina leading by five with 9.14 to play. You see the scoring drive. And uh, Connor Shaw with maybe his best pass of his career. Well, this is how you respond to adversity. After getting nailed in the back here, turning his back to game tackling defenders, you come right back with a big strike to Ace Sanders here, perfectly thrown, beating Jalen Watkins on that pass. Shaw showing some tenacity and some execution back to back. He had only 35 yards before that, okay, in passing. And he had 46 on that particular play. Well, you combine that particular play along with the first half, what we saw in unscripted plays and the production, he has been outstanding yeah. this game. Yeah, he is, uh, as they say, provided, as advertised, his specialty running the football. But that was an excellent pass and pretty good coverage, too, by Watkins. Jeff Demps is back deep. They have been coming with that sky kick that's been coming down somewhere between the 20 and 30-yard line. The last time Demps managed to get up and get it, 
but he's honoring the potential of them kicking it deep. Angling again inside the 25 yard line, perfectly executed, and Dips is down at the 32. Let's check in again with Lewis Johnson on the health of John Brantley, who limps out. Hey, Tim, uh, John Brantley sat right next to Charlie Weiss while South Carolina was on offense. He took absolutely no medical attention, and in the chains of possession, it was interesting to see how he got the multiple signs of respect and support from his teammates, but none was bigger than the one he got from Will Muschamp, who gave him the big handshake and the face and the eyes that said, Brantley, go get it. Boy, he is one tough customer. And that's consistent exactly what Will Meschamp told us. He says he doesn't just affect our offense, Tim. He affects our defense as well. Out of the shotgun, it's raining. Oh, look at him just negotiate through that first line. And then uh, Jitterbug out to near a first down. Let's go to New York and Adam Zucker with an update. All right, Tim, thanks. A couple hours away from your Clemson has tied it back up. Taj Boyd to Jerron Brown. They are all tied up at 28 with five and a half to go in the game. Control of the ACC Atlantic on the line. Tim and Spencer. This has become some uh, state for college football with Clemson's uh, dominance over in the ACC and the potential of uh, South Carolina perhaps winning the East for a second consecutive year. Rainy. Boy, slipped as he was making that cutback that was similar to the move that he made uh, a few moments ago down at the 48-yard line. Well, coming up, we'll have the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. John Brantley threw for 190 yards in the first half against Alabama. In the closing moments, got that high ankle sprain. Could not have come at a more inopportune time. But now, here he is trying to make the most of what opportunity he has. In the Florida bloodlines. The handoff is to Rainey. And that quick burst gets him four yards. Tim, one thing I'm noticing right now in the defense, particularly on the back end of South Carolina, they've got to play with more urgency right now. The ebb and flow is happening. Now Florida's got the momentum. South Carolina has got to play with that kinetic, aggressive style that defined the early part of this second half. It's been a huge fourth quarter for Rainey. Look at that. 71 yards in this quarter. That's a busted play, and Brantley just has to go down. He went one way, and Rainey went the other. Well, the only thing that has stopped Florida right now in this second half is their own execution or lack thereof on this particular play. Again, I think Rainey steps the opposite direction. It could have been Brantley. We don't know, but the execution is poor on that play, and it puts the Gamecocks in a positive situation yardage-wise. We'll see if the Florida offensive front can block number six in long-distance situations. Melvin Ingram has been a real problem. Defensive end at the top of your screen. Here he comes, and they run the screen to Rainey, and he's run down quickly. Shaq Wilson makes the stop, and let's get an update from Happy Valley, Adam Zucker in New York. Well, Tim, Happy Valley's getting happier. They were down 17-0, but off a Nebraska fumble. Stephon Green finds his hole and gets in. It's 17-14 with under six minutes to play. Nittany Lions trying to stay undefeated in Big Ten play. Tim and Spencer. That's been a problem for Nebraska turnovers. And yep. again, they've got a big back who uncharacteristically turned the ball over. Listen to this crowd. They are smelling it here on third down and 20. Burton and Joyner in the backfield for max protection for Brantley. There's number six. Ingram after him again, and he has to throw it away. They cannot control Melvin Ingram.
Ingram is a beast. When he comes off the ball, he is so aggressive. He is so consistent in his play. That's one thing that everybody else in that defensive line, Clowney and company, can take their cue from him. Hey, Sam Sanders, who had that uh, big, big catch leading to the South Carolina field goal, is back deep as Christie boots it away. And that one will go all the way into the end zone. Florida has all three of their timeouts left. They trail by five. Seventeen to twelve, South Carolina with the lead, and some shining moments from around the country today. Kirk Cousins, uh, another big day in the air against the Hawkeyes. How about Brandon Wheaton? Just a, another show that he's putting on as Oklahoma State. Uh, Gets ready for Bedlam by just hammering Texas Tech. Yeah, there's something about those former baseball players. He's doing his best Chris Winkie impersonation, <laughs> didn't he? 28 years of age, and they've got that state personality. There's something about it, and he's proven it again. Done a fantastic job there in Stillwater. And a reminder, you know, tonight, uh, Boise State will be playing uh, against TCU in a battle of flies in the ointment. That's right, and TCU will have a new address uh, yep, very fairly soon. soon and down year for them defensively and the Oregon Stanford game uh, so much of the big picture of college football is mm -hmm. is going to begin to settle that's right by and the it, end of the evening and Stanford needs to be careful Chris Owosu their outstanding wide receiver is going to miss that game and they use him in that tight end to set up their power rushing attack and uh, I think that's going to be key to the outcome of that game Tim this could be as they uh, say uh, a shape up Saturday afternoon or we, step down. Yeah, Either we one. may be settling things in the SEC East with this this ball game as well as uh, the Georgia Auburn game to follow. Vern, Gary, and Tracy are standing by in Athens, Georgia, for that one. Brandon Wiles in the backfield, and he'll carry it. Hmm. And he ran it right into Sharif Floyd, and then bounced off him for more positive yardage beyond the 20 to about the 22. Well, what does this game mean? Well, if South Carolina wins, they apply pressure to the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia will have to win not only against Auburn later this afternoon, but a matchup with Kentucky coming later to make their way to Atlanta for the Southeastern Conference Championship. Wiles, by the way, with 100 yards rushing after that last run. Second and seven. He goes again. Well, he has just been one of those guys that you can count on for durability. Ahead for five there. Jay Howard, number six, made the stop. Yeah, and Tim, we're talking about the importance of this win for both teams. And for Florida, if you look at it, you unpack their wins this year. They've all come against unranked opponents. Yeah. And alternately, all four of their losses have come against ranked foes. So from a motivation standpoint, it's important for them to get this win. Uh, easily moved. Smart move by the South Carolina offense, it appeared. They saw the movement, then they snapped it. Here comes the call. Offside, defense number two. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. Now, well, coming this December to showtime, it's a game of honor. An all-access look into the lives of the football players of Army and Navy. You'll get unprecedented access to see what it takes to be a cadet in midshipman. And find out what makes the Army-Navy game one of the greatest rivalries in all of sport. That's a game of honor this December only on Showtime. First penalty of this half against Florida, and it came at the worst possible time. With the clock winding down to four minutes. They really need to stop here. And they're going to have to start using their timeouts. John. Well, that was a saving tackle by Elam, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it he's, was. He is really good, 22. Gain of two. Well, there are a couple of ways to affect offenses. One is to, again, play on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And Elam does a fantastic job of blowing out the legs of Shaw there. And, Tim, one little quick note about your penalties. This, this Florida team is the most penalized team in the FBS. And, again, just one penalty so far. But it's been a costly one. I'm talking about this half. It's been a costly one. This is a huge series for the Florida defense. Otherwise, they have to start emptying those timeouts. Give it to Wiles. No, it's a fake to him, and it's a first down for Shaw. What a fake. 
What a beautiful fake. By the way, Wiles would have had a first down, too. Slide of hand by number 14 at quarterback. Well, you can see here's a missed opportunity. Florida has a chance to stop this play. Runs right by the quarterback, and Shaw does a better job of finding the void there. He's got blockers on the outside, and he slides feet first. Heads up play by Shaw. With the first down and the clock ticking, as you look at Dan Quinn, they know they're going to have to get stops and then start using timeouts. Plus, the field position shift is huge. Wiles down at the 49-yard line into Florida territory. Ronald Powell made the stop. And again, a full complement of timeouts for Florida. South Carolina would not obviously want to use any of theirs. Florida's got to start burning them at some point in time. They've got to get a stop to the first team. Yeah. Well, second and five. Big, big play here. Which would go a long way to determining the outcome of this game. Play of the game. Time out. We'll be back. We are going to have a, another review here, I believe, of the where the ball is placed here. As you see, Wiles going down. He may have been shy of the first down by about a half yard. Bostic bringing him down. The they left. are going to measure it. I thought that he had made it, and he did. Okay, good. Thought perhaps we may have had a booth review, but we did not. They just wanted to check the measurement. It looked as though he made it by a far greater distance, though, did it? From did up it here, it did. But it down really on did. the field level, you could see the elbow and the ball. It was at an angle a little bit, and it possibly could have been viewed as behind that marker on the far sideline. My eyes don't deceive me after all. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes and 47 seconds off the clock in this uh, drive. And now Florida having utilized one of its timeouts down to two with 147 remaining. This kid's really been tough, Wiles. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage. And another timeout taken by the Gators. That's all Will Muschamp's team can do at this stage. Now they need a strip. They need a fumble. Something big to happen. A lot of coaches in a huddle calculating time <laughs> remaining with timeouts left. Florida with but one in um, Will Muschamp's hip pocket. And a minute 42 left with second and 10 coming up. South Carolina at seven and two overall could move to six and two and close out their Southeastern Conference campaign and put themselves in a position to force Georgia to must win today and must win against Kentucky. Wiles again burrows to the 40 yard line and another timeout. 138 left. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Florida is out of timeouts. Third down and eight coming up. John Brantley just uh, aching for an opportunity to get back out there and lead his offense. But the question becomes, do you as a South Carolina offense dare put the ball up in the air, not convert, and uh, potentially leave more time on the clock for John Brantley? Doesn't appear as though Steve is thinking in those terms. He may even be thinking four down territory. The way today's game is gone. Shaw with a late option pitch. And it's Wiles. And he's down about the line of scrimmage. Negligible gain and uh, Omar Hunter, number 99, made the stop. Well, it's a gutsy play to call an option pass against that defensive front with no one behind you. If that 
pass or pitch is errant. It's Katie bar the door the other way. You know when you think about it that punt by Christie that uh, went into the end zone for a touchback was. That was unfortunate for Florida. They could have pinned South Carolina back deep and made this a much more difficult drive for the Gamecocks. Well, there are a couple of key special team plays that made the difference today. Again, but mistakes ultimately wind up doing. We can point to the one penalty on the last drive, Florida, uh, offsides penalty there. That was problematic. Allowed them to move the chains. The Gamecocks just continue to move on. So there are three or four key plays so far. The problem for Spurrier is the big play capability of Florida. With all of that speed, we've seen it with Rainey. You know, Dimps can can go 80, 90 yards as fast as anyone. The offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. They take the penalty before they punt the ball away. But there's always that big play capability with this Florida team with all the speed that they bring out there. And as Will Muschamp looks on, nobody has done a better job than Charlie Weiss of taking the talent that he has and creating a system that works, doing more with less. Joey Scribner Howard will punt it away. Fair catch is called at the 11-yard line by Deontay Saunders. So, 42 ticks left for Florida. But first, let's look at our play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Well, here is Steve Great. Torrey Holt coined the phrase, big plays, big days. And here it is, Connor Shaw to Ace Sanders. Trying to defend it is Jalen Watkins on the big end of that one. Comes up short. That is your play of the game. They are rocking the house here at Williams Bryce. The last true conference championship they had came in the 69 season in the ACC. They did not close out that championship on this field. They have a chance to close their regular season with an opportunity saying they won a title on their home field, a divisional title. Rainey was the intended receiver, incomplete. It's one of the things that uh, Steve Spurrier was telling us, a whole lot of firsts. That uh, South Carolina team was coached by Paul Dietzel in 1969. See, here's where the inability for Florida to get the ball down the field via the pass may come back to bite them again. They've struggled with this all year long. Brantley under pressure. Some resourcefulness, and he finds Jordan Reed. And Reed's got a first down to the 21-yard line. They stop the clock to move the chains. Remember, Florida has exhausted their timeouts. But don't expect Alex Johnson, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, to pull up. They are coming after him. Hell bent for election, trying to affect this lane quarterback. He's got to get rid of it quickly. He does underneath again to Rainey. Look at that. Watch out at the 40 another first down and they'll stop the clock again for the change to move with 11 remaining. Well, you think about it if you can get it to the 50 and out of bounds you can take a shot to the end zone. They decide to spike it. With nine ticks left. Are you thinking two plays here? I'm thinking two plays. You've got a shot. The average play is going to last six to seven seconds. If they get it to the boundary and out of bounds, incomplete, obviously the clock will start. Do you take the shot now, though, or do you take it on the back end? That's the difference. Well, you, you really don't know with, with Brantley on a leg and a half back there. He's got to get rid of the football pretty quickly. The margin for error is zero. Yeah. I mean, he can't move. This may wind up being the last play, Timothy. Well, we've got um, our referee coming over, Matt Austin, maybe wanting to talk. Please reset the game clock to nine seconds. Yeah, the clock had begun to move down to four, so they got it back up to nine seconds, which is where it should have been. <laughs> Little home field clock <laughs> operating there for the head ball coach. <laughs> Second and ten. <laughs> Brantley under pressure and down. That should do it. Steve Spurrier does it to the Gators again. Second straight time. They finished the conference campaign at six and two. Their overall record moves to eight and two. 
Here's the pressure again. Well, again, it's because of the inability to move. The pistol worked for him last week, a little bit this week, but again, not able to move. Steve Spurrier excited about the fact that we eventually were able to get to the guy. For Spencer Tillman and Lewis Johnson, Tim Brando saying so long from Columbia, South Carolina, where once again our final score, 17 to 12, South Carolina. Now, Georgia, it's on you. Coming up next, it's the Home Depot SEC on CBS. 15th ranked Georgia, host 20th ranked Auburn. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship.